Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our celebration here. It's the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time, and uh, we want to welcome many guests here as well today. This is a first, not in a, a first in the Catholic Church. It's been done before, but it's a first for me. We're going to have a wedding actually within this Mass, and so we want to say special prayers as we all as a parish community witness and ask God to bless this union between Anna and Jeffrey. A few of our announcements, our Faith Formation Committee is welcoming Bob Dolan on Wednesday evening right here at this site at 6 o'clock p.m. Bob Dolan is the brother of Timothy Dolan, who is a cardinal out there in New York City. And uh, Bob will be speaking to us about his family's role in fostering a child's vocation, his own family's faith, and how his brother's simple spirituality can help us all lead Christ-centered lives. Bob will also be available to sign copies of his book. Please note that I'm moving the confession times from Wednesday evening to Thursday evenings over at our St. Peter's site, and also it will be a half hour earlier at 6.30 p.m. The month of November is the month in which we not only commemorate the saints of our faith, but also remember all our beloved dead, those who have gone before us marked with that sign of faith. And at both of our worship sites, we have the Book of the Dead, in which we are encouraging everyone to write the names of their loved ones who have passed on. At this site, it's over here by the baptismal font. You'll see a lectern right over there, and please don't feel bashful to put names in that book of the dead. Also following this Mass this morning, we have our Lunch with the Saints downstairs in the lower church, and that follows immediately after this Mass. Also, and that's for those of you who signed up for the lunch with the saints. So I believe you needed a reservation to do this. Our confirmation students will also be attending the lunch, and they too should be planning to be meeting downstairs as well. I believe there's no children's liturgy of the word at this Mass. So we've got about a, a minute. Let's rise. Let's greet one another and welcome everybody in the midst of God's church. Please join us now in singing our gathering hymn found in your worship aid. Though the mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand as a shell for all who will call on his name, sing the praise and the glory of God. Could the Lord ever leave you? Could the Lord forget his love? Though a mother forsake her child, he will not The mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand as a shelter for all who will call on his name, sing the praise and the glory of God. Forsake me not, O Lord, my God. Be not far from me. Make haste and come to my help, O Lord, my strong salvation. Make, Make haste, haste and, and come, come to, to my, my help, help, O Lord, Lord. my strong salvation.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning and welcome again. And as I mentioned, for those of you who might be just coming in, we're, it's not just a regular, ordinary time Mass. Within this Mass, we'll be celebrating not only the sacrament of the Eucharist, but also a nuptial Mass as well, in which Jeff and Anna will be brought together today before the Lord and as we witness this in this faith community. So we, our prayers go with them. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. sins of the world have made our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. Let us pray. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness, pour out your grace on these your servants, Jeff and Anna, that coming together before this altar today, they may be confirmed in love for one another. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Before the Lord, the whole universe is as a grain from a balance, or a drop of morning dew come down upon the earth. But you have mercy on all, because you can do all things, and you overlook people's sins that they may repent. For you love all things that are, and loathe nothing that you have made. For what you hated, you would not have fashioned. And how could a thing remain unless you willed it, or be preserved, had it not been called forth by you? But you spare all things, because they are yours, O Lord and lover of souls. For your imperishable spirit is in all things. Therefore, you rebuke offenders little by little, warn them and remind them of the sins they are committing, that they may abandon their wickedness and believe in you, O Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I ha have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was. But he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they all saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor, and if I have extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. 
I got good news and bad news. <laughs> the good news is it's not 52 degrees in here like it was at 7.30 this morning for Mass. The bad news is I tried to get those bells to work, but they won't budge. <laughs> if you want to climb up the bell tower, they made a request. They wanted the bells to be ringing as they leave the church, so we're going to work on them, though, all right? But we did give it an honest try, and nothing happened. Well, the lights dimmed a little bit when I pushed the button, so... <laughs> We're here today to celebrate, as we do each Sunday, sacraments, the Eucharist, of course, but here we also celebrate another sacrament of marriage. Sacraments are visible signs given to us by Jesus, totally as gift that we do not deserve, but he gives them to us so that we may receive God's abundant grace to face the challenges of this world. Visible sign. Every one of those sacraments has visibility within it. Signs are always pointing us to something else, something far greater than themselves. So let's just focus on marriage for all of us who live out that sacrament in your married lives. Indeed, it is a very visible sacrament. But what is it pointing to? As I said, these visible signs, these signs are pointing to something far greater than themselves. Now, I always like to use the analogy of, of a mirror. I used to do this when I taught high school religion many, many, many years ago. But when it got time for the seniors to study the sacrament of marriage, I used to always put up a large mirror right in the middle of the classroom. Imagine that. I was pretty crazy in those days, and I usually pulled stunts like that, but uh, it got their attention. You got to get their attention. And so the mirror is up. And of course, they all look at it, and they're all wondering, what is crazy Father Jim up to now? And the first few days of the class, I didn't say anything at all. I ignored the mirror as if it wasn't even there, right in the middle of the classroom. Well, finally, after three or four classes, Father, why do you got this huge mirror right in the middle of the classroom? Because it's there to remind you of what marriage is all about. They still didn't understand. You could tell by their puzzled looks on their faces so I says, I want you to think about this now. Imagine it's your wedding day. Remember, I'm speaking to these seniors who are 17 years old. You know, it's still a number of years down the road, but it's your wedding day. And I want you to imagine that you are with your spouse, whoever he or she will be, and you are in that mirror standing with your spouse. You're the reflection in the mirror. And then I ask the question, I says, and who's the real thing standing in front of the mirror? The greatest bridegroom of all, Jesus Christ and the bride is his church, us. You know, the Bible, that big, giant, thick book that we all probably have at home, sometimes we're a little afraid to open it up because it looks so intimidating. But I'll make it simple for you. The Bible is really the greatest love story ever told. It's a story about God who created us and who wants to take us for himself in the greatest love story ever told, as I said. That's really what the whole Bible's about. And God so loved this world that he sent his only son into this world, Jesus, in the flesh, became one of us, became all things except sin that we share with him in our humanness 
to show us that love. He purchased for himself a bride. He did it by the blood of that cross. Because as our Lord also says, there's no greater love than this than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And he certainly proved that to us. The sacrament of marriage is our way of reflecting the perfect love that Jesus has for us. Now, granted, every reflection is not perfect. None of us are perfect. But that doesn't mean we reach or strive for perfection because we are called to be perfect as God is perfect. Now, do you think it's easy to be perfect? But we're asked to try. And that's why God gives us these sacraments, the grace, the strength, the very life of God within us to help us. And all we need to do is to cooperate with that grace and just as Jesus wants to be very intimate with us, married couples are invited to that same intimacy with each other. It's really so simple. In that second reading, that was a special reading for marriages, that St. Paul summarizes it all so much. It's all about that genuine love not just the human love, not just the feelings and emotions. We're talking about the highest love that there is. And I'm sure, Jeff and Anna, you know that anything that is good in this life takes a lot of hard work. Ask any married couple here who's been married more than just a handful of years, and they will tell you that it it takes a lot of sacrifice, compromises, communication, but most importantly is make sure you invite Jesus into this love because he'll give you all the help you need. In a moment, you're going to go up here before all of us. I don't marry you. If I married them, I'd be getting into trouble, right? It's the only sacrament that the priest doesn't minister. It's the couple ministers this sacrament to each other. I just witness it and bless it, and we're all here with smiles on our faces, and our prayers are with you today. I think this is perhaps one of the ideal ways to celebrate a marriage as well. Not that for many of our couples who do the Saturday early afternoon weddings, that that's wrong. But this is the way the early church did weddings. The whole community was there. And it's good for us to be here today. So it begins today. Just like your baptism. Jeff was just newly baptized with Jeffrey, his son, just this past Easter. But just like our baptism, it's not just today, it's for the rest of our life. The long day of our baptism, the long day now of our marriage. May you have many, many happy years together. And may God's blessings be with you as we pray for you today and all days. going to ask the bride and groom to please stand and to please come forward and very carefully go up the steps and you don't have to stand just between the altar and the top step there right in the center there and face out and then the best man and maid of honor please come forward as well maid of honor just one step down, and best man, one step down. And can't forget Jeffrey, who's the ring bearer. 
Jeffrey, you're going to stand right next to the best man there. And the rest of us just stay seated. My dear friends, you have come here today in this church so that the Lord may seal and strengthen your love in the presence of this church's minister and this faith community. Christ abundantly blesses this love. He has already consecrated you in baptism, and now he enriches and strengthens you by this special sacrament so that you may assume the duties of marriage in mutual and lasting fidelity. And so in the presence of the church, I first ask you to state your intentions as to why you're here today. Jeff and Anna, have you come here freely without reservation to give yourselves to each other in marriage? Yes. Will you love and honor each other as man and wife for the rest of your lives? And will you accept children lovingly from God and bring them up according to the law of Christ and His church? Since it is your intention to enter into this marriage, you may give your flowers to your maid of honor. Now I ask you to turn and face each other, holding right hands, so that you now may declare your consent before God and His church. And Jeff, just repeat after me first. I, Jeff, take you, Anna, to be my wife. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. Anna, repeat after me. I, Anna, take you, Jeff, to be my husband. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. You have declared your consent before the church. May the Lord in his goodness strengthen your consent and fill you both with his many blessings. For what God has joined together, men must never divide. Let us pray. May the Lord bless these rings which you give to each other as the sign of your love and fidelity. Amen. Repeat after me, Jeff. Place it on her finger first. Anna. Anna. Take this ring. Take this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. Of a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jeff, take this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may kiss. Congratulations. Please rise for the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. Um, amen. The God who promises the gift of salvation to all will give to us what we need. Our response is, bless your people, Lord. Bless, bless your, your people, people Lord. Lord. For Pope Francis, all bishops, priests, and deacons, may they continue to spread the word of God throughout the church so that all who seek may find Jesus, we pray. Bless your people, Lord. For our government leaders, may they base their decisions on the respect and dignity of human life, we pray. Bless your people, Lord. For those who are oppressed by fear, poverty, or loneliness, may they experience the love of Jesus through the actions of people who care for them, we pray. Bless your people, Lord. For Anna and Jeff and all those who receive the sacrament of marriage, may they look to St. Joseph and the Blessed Mother as their patrons for establishing holy families filled with faith, hope, and love. We pray, bless your people, Lord. For the holy souls in purgatory, may God's mercy be upon them and may they soon be united with him in the kingdom of heaven. We pray, bless your people, Lord. For the living and deceased members of most blessed sacrament parish, for intentions requested in our prayer books and our books of the dead and on our prayer line, and for our personal intentions. We pray, bless your people, Lord. For those who have died, in particular we pray for Judith B. Diderick, James S. Ryan, and Joe and Lou Callis. May they join the angels and saints giving everlasting praise to God in heaven we pray. Bless your people, Lord. Eternal God, you care for each one of us so that no one may be lost. Hear these our prayers that we might be saved and enjoy everlasting life with you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Your youth is renewed like an eagle. Your youth is renewed like an eagle. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest.
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these, these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, 
so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. This time we remember all our beloved dead, especially in this month of November but most especially these names on this altar of our parishioners who have gone before us marked with that sign of faith in this past year. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also your servants, who though sinners hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art. This time I invite the bride and groom to come forward, please, for the nuptial blessing that traditionally always follows the Lord's Prayer. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to the Lord that on these his servants now married in Christ, he may mercifully pour out the blessing of his grace and make of one heart and love those he has joined by a holy covenant. O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man, and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing not forfeited by original sin, nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these your servants, joined together in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit, and pour your love into their hearts, that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter Anna, and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband entrust his heart to her, 
so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, may these your servants hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments, made one in the flesh. May they be blameless in all they do, and with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children and grant that, reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Kiss. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence, O Lord. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence, O Lord. In a moment, we come to the table of the Lord in this most beautiful way that we receive him in the most intimate way. The bride and groom will be receiving communion first, and as the tradition here is at this site, then we will have everybody starting from the back coming down. So those of you who are up front, you just have to wait a little while. Remember, the last will be first. If you are not Catholic, we ask you please to respect our Catholic tradition and refrain from receiving communion. If you still like to join the community coming forward, 
and not receive communion but receive a blessing, just simply do this and the minister or myself will give you a blessing. Thank you. who were in the dark are thankful for the sunlight. Those who live, we who die, are grateful for his gift. Thankful for Shh. 
shelter them with peace. Behold, behold the Lamb of God, all who hears, all who drinks shall live. And Please be seated. Prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. 
be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just be seated for a moment, and I invite the two official witnesses to please come forward. That's the best man and maid of honor. Jeff and Anna are sacramentally married, but they're not legally married yet until the license is signed. So there's always, by law, two witnesses required. Please stand, and bridegroom and bride, please come forward one last time. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Go forth. No, no, no. By your life. No, no. Bow down. For <laughs> Not that fast. <laughs> Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God, with his word of blessing, unite your hearts in the never-ending bond of pure love. Amen. Amen. May your children bring you happiness. May a generous love for them be returned to you many times over. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ live always in your hearts and in your home. May you have true friends to stand by you, both in joy and in sorrow. May you be ready and willing to help and comfort all who come to you in need. And may the blessings promised to the compassionate be yours in abundance. Amen. Amen. May you find happiness and satisfaction in your work. May daily problems never cause you undue anxiety, nor the desire for earthly possessions dominate your lives. But may your heart's first desire be always the good things waiting for you in the life of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the Lord bless you with many happy years together so that you may enjoy the rewards of a good life. And after you have served him loyally in his kingdom on earth, may he welcome you to his eternal kingdom in heaven. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God, but before we, up, up, Marshall. <laughs> Marshall, you've done enough of these weddings, you should know what comes next. <laughs> Turn your face out. I'd like to introduce for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Jeff Watson. <laughs> Now, Marshall. Now, Marshall. <laughs> Music. Let all creation sing. Let children proclaim through every land, Hosanna to our King. Sound the trump. 
shepherd into the night. The day of the Lord is near. Wake your people, lift your voice, proclaim it to the world. Let heaven rejoice and earth be glad. Let all creation sing. Let children proclaim through every land, Hosanna to our King. Rise in splendor, shake off your sleep, put on your robes of joy, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord. Let heaven rejoice and earth be glad, let all creation sing, let children proclaim through Hosanna to all.